Hey guys, in this video I wanted to take on two different points I've seen in comments and questions that I've been asked recently that I think are really relevant to the lightning to 3.5mm cable that goes with the AirPods Max. One of them I think is a misunderstanding. It came as a comment to one of my previous videos where a gentleman suggested that since this cable has an analog to digital converter in it, meaning it takes the analog it's getting from the 3.5mm and turns it back into digital for the lightning, going into the AirPods, which then internally, these have their own converter that pulls it back into analog. He was saying that since that is true, using a DAC, which stands for Digital to Analog Converter, not only is useless, it could actually diminish the audio quality. Now, I'm not trying to throw shade at that person or make anybody feel bad. I just feel that that's a really bad piece of information for people uh, and since this channel is about me sharing what I've come to know over many years of playing in the audio realm as a serious hobby, I wanted to set that straight. I realize that audiophile grade DACs are things that people go out of their way to buy when they want extremely fine detail and high quality sound through their system. But I think that's created the misunderstanding for people that if you don't go out of your way to buy one of these audiophile level DACs, that you don't have a DAC. Digital data is stored on your computer, which is what we have like MP3s and FLAC and all of that. For that to come out of anything, headphones, speakers, for us to hear it, at some point along the way, that digital information has to be translated into an analog signal because that's the only way speakers work. Meaning, even if you haven't gone out of your way to buy one of these really high-end DACs, you have one. You have one in your Surface tablet, in your iPad, in your desktop computer, your laptop, whatever you have that has speakers on it and or has a 3.5 millimeter jack, it has a DAC in it. So for somebody to be saying to people, don't use a DAC with this cable or it can damage things, when you understand it at that level, you realize how silly that becomes because you're like, it's literally impossible to use a 3.5 millimeter jack without digital to analog conversion having been done. You have a DAC no matter what. If somehow using a DAC caused problems with this cable, Apple wouldn't have even made this the plug that they use to do it. Because for an analog signal to even be being sent to the AirPods, period, as I said, this conversion has to be done. Now, yes, it is a little wonky that they did the cable this way, Apple that is, where they're asking for an analog signal that they're turning back into digital so that they could turn it back into analog inside the headphones. It is silly. But I can confirm through various usage, as silly and inefficient as that might seem, it doesn't seem to degrade the quality of the audio. And that leads me right into the second point that I wanted to address in this video. People have suggested that since the AirPods have their own DSP, digital signal processor, which is the thing that kind of shapes the audio signal and corrects or adapts things to sound better, since it has their own that and they have their own digital analog converter that takes the digital signal from this and turns it into analog, or from Bluetooth, which is digital, turns the Bluetooth into analog for the speakers in here. They're saying since it has that inside, anything that happens before it doesn't matter. And some people then claim that using this cable is irrelevant because nothing will make it sound better. That is also false. We have to think about that for a moment. The digital signal processor that's in these can only decode and play with the samples being sent to it. Crap in, crap out, as they always say, in it. The difference between plugging this into, say, a really low-end uh, headphone jack on some cheap device, or maybe you have like cheap onboard uh, audio outputs on your motherboard that don't sound very good. And so yeah, plugging this into that, it's gonna send a diminished signal to the AirPods, and you may not notice a big difference from that. On the other hand, if you have like what I use, a Sound Blaster XG6, or you have some other even higher quality DAC headphone amp plug that you are using, that's pushing a much cleaner, much more detailed signal through this to the end. There's really no way that that doesn't improve things, but it's not just theoretical for me to say that. Unlike some of the people who have postulated these things, which I have a feeling may not really own the AirPods or have ever used this, they're just saying things. I have done a lot of testing back and forth with these things and I can certainly confirm that while it doesn't sound too bad watching a movie at night with an iPad and plugging this cable into that, it certainly sounds better plugging this into my sound card at my desk where I normally drive my high-end headphones from than this. 
And if what they were saying was true, that the magic of the digital signal processor in this was such that it would somehow make the audio sound just as good no matter what, well, that wouldn't be true. It can only work with the data that it's being sent originally. Even though there are needless conversions happening in this cable and the headphones back and forth, which in a perfect world wouldn't happen, needless conversions back and forth or not, you still have to start with a good signal for anything to be converting good signal back and forth with an end result of good signal over here. If you start with a bad signal, that's all it has to work with. A DSP can try to correct for some of that to a point, but there are limits. Now the DSP on these is very good. It's the reason I think that plugging in the cable does sound better but not as much better as some people would have expected. And I, I have said before, I think that's less a function of not getting you know, what you hoped for out of the cable, and it's more a function of the inherent limitations of Bluetooth as a lossy format. The DSP does a good job of correcting for that, but even high quality Bluetooth audio is still potentially better than really cheap and distorted output from a really cheap jack which I think is where some of these misunderstandings come from. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Feel free to put your comments below if you want me to talk more about this in some other uh, degree, or I can do a follow-up video on it, especially the part about DACs. I realize that probably leads to a lot of confusion uh, there. Hopefully I've done a good enough job explaining it, but let me know if I haven't. Thanks for watching.